Uh, hi. Uh, can I please get the, uh, ooh. can I please get a quarter pounder with cheese, thanks? <laughs> Actually, did you know the quarter pounder is slightly more than a quarter of a pound? So that's inaccurate calling it a quarter pounder. Oh, God, I shouldn't have got you that buzzer for Christmas. Actually, you gave me a gift certificate for $3.70 and I paid for the rest of the money for this buzzer, so I got it for me for Christmas. Whatever. Uh, And can I also please get a milkshake? Did you know that it's not even shaken, so calling it a shake isn't entirely accurate either. Oh, uh, yeah, just do you mind I'm trying to order and just uh, some french fries, thanks. They shouldn't even, in fact, be called french fries. The origins are thought to be from Belgium. Oh, man. I understand you're all about truth, Burn, but my God, you need to calm things down a bit. Let's go see how professionals actually fact check. All right, then, let's get to it. Our next guest is Matt Martino, who is a journalist with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. He has written articles about the reach of North Korean missiles, as well as why Australia didn't do better at the Rio Olympics. (laughs) But we've asked him here today because of his work with RMIT ABC Fact Check which uses journalism and academia to assess the accuracy of claims by politicians, industry and public figures. Thanks for joining us today, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. (laughs) We're kind of at your work, so I'm not sure how great it is for you to be here, but it's great for us to be here. Well, I like being at work. (laughs) (laughs) If you're listening, ABC. (laughs) Now, we really have to be accurate with this episode, don't we? Because these guys can chase up if we say anything stupid. That's exactly right, yes. Well, you know, you guys count as the media. We actually don't check the media. Oh, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we have Media Watch for that at the ABC. That's oh. that's more their bag. And that is a great show, by the way. Mm. I would love to make it onto Media Watch. Well, I don't know. I'd love I, it and hate it at the same what time. End? What I don't end? know if you want to get on there. No, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of people who prefer they wouldn't be. <laughs> I feel like it'd be great publicity, <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first question, and I think is one of the things I'm most interested in knowing, is how do fact-checkers actually go about verifying claims made? Like, what sort of methods do you guys use to assess the truth? Well, look, we, uh, I mean, in a broad sense, we use publicly available data, uh, sometimes data that is given to us, um, you know, uh, from government departments, which isn't publicly available, and expert opinion. So we go out first, when we, when we, when we have a claim, I'll go through, um, you know, how we, how we check our claims. We, we find a claim. And we ask ourselves, okay, is this checkable? Is this going, are we going to be able to find data on this or, you know? And also we have to look at the, like, the way that it's worded, you know? Like, for example, we put out a really interesting fact check today um, on um, Bob Catter's claim uh, that uh, th- every three months someone is torn apart in North Queensland by a crocodile. What does torn apart mean? We had endless discussions about this. <laughs> you know? Can you cut in what he said? Because it's amazing. So we'll cut in the episode what so he said. So Bob Catter started on the, one of the most amazing tangents you'll ever see. This is for our American listeners. Bob Catter is a senator? Is uh, no, Bob Catter is a, an MP in he's the lower MP, house. A federal MP. House, house yes. of Reps. And he's gone on about how great it is that we've now introduced gay marriage. But he's not interested in talking about that because it's far more important to talk about how crocodiles are eating people in the North Queensland, <laughs> which is the most amazing tangent, really. I mean, you know, people are entitled to their sexual proclivities. You know, I mean, let there be a thousand blossoms bloom as far as I'm concerned. You know, but I ain't spending any time on it because in the meantime... Every three months, a person is torn to pieces by a crocodile in North Queensland. Yeah. <sighs> He's gone all Kevin Spacey. He's... <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Oh. All right, go on. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, <to> <laughs> anyway, so we had endless discussions about, you know, how, I mean... I counted that, you know, perhaps torn apart could possibly mean something something else to someone else. Does it mean that, uh, you know, that it, the crocodiles are killing people or does it mean that, um, you know, they're just getting a little chewed? 
little bit of a nibble. Oh, we did settle. We did settle in the end that it, you know if someone's being torn to pieces, they're they're probably dead, Brian. That's how you would. That's how I would. Well, what about it, emotionally yeah. though? Like you know, leave Britney alone, like that type of guy. Like you know, with crocodiles, like, leave the crocodiles alone. <laughs> yeah, once again, more, more ways of interpreting it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't quite go that ridiculous, but. <laughs> Um, well, so, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> One, once we've come through that stage, uh, you know, of, uh, of sort of interpreting it, uh, we go out and see if there's any data available. We contact government departments. Uh, we speak to experts because, you know, we, we, we often come to these things really cold. We're not experts in any of these things. I mean, do you guys know anything about global horizontal radiation or direct normal irradiance? Wait. Uh, yeah. No. no, no. <laughs> See, neither do I. And actually, you know, I haven't fully brushed up on this particular fact check, so I couldn't explain <laughs> either of those concepts to you. But they were really key concepts in a fact check that we did on Bill Shorten where he said that uh, Australia is the sunniest continent. Um, so, um, you know, we got experts to tell us what these things meant and, you know, how we measure that data. Um, and it turned out that indeed on both of these measures, global horizontal radiation and direct normal irradiance, that Australia is, um, if not the best, then, you know, on equal par with Africa. So we found him correct. Hmm. Um, interesting little tidbit. Yeah, uh, that's good. And so then we... I'll be using that from now on. <laughs> Sunniest continent. Yeah, we are. Well, yeah. yep, you can take that one. I'm definitely bank. claiming that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, once we've once we've done that, we you know sort of write up a draft. And the the thing about our process is that we don't, you know, it's not just one person writing it. So a researcher will write it, and then our editor will take a look at it, and then he'll say, you know, well, you know, what about this? What about that? And we'll go back and redraft it. And once he's happy with it, then it'll go to our chief fact checker, um, who will pretty much tear the entire thing apart um, and, uh, you know, we'll go back and rewrite and, you know, ask a whole lot of questions. And it's like it's for me as a journalist, it's been a really interesting process because, uh, you know, there's perspectives that other people bring to your work, which you normally would, you know, you normally probably only give it to an editor. And this In this process, we sort of workshop it in a group. Uh, and um, you d- you you learn that not everyone sees the world in the way that you do, and not everyone interprets what you're saying in the way that you do. Um, mm. And so there are a lot of things that you might write which are actually quite pro- problematic for a cogent thesis. Yeah. Um, so once that's all done, then um, you know it. That's when my the main function of my job comes in, and I make sure that it all it all sort of. Uh, uh, aligns with ABC style, and I also challenge the researcher uh, on any inaccuracies which I see as well. And I mean, there are sometimes things that the chief fact checker and our editor will miss, and uh, you know, I bring a completely different perspective to that. Yeah. Um, and then finally, once you know we've had all these arguments, we all sit down and we have another argument about the verdict and the colours that we're going to use, which is a really huge part of what we do and kind of the tagline, the, the draw card for people, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, so reds are bald-faced lie, green's that truthful, and then you've got your yellow in the middle for somewhat. I would say, I, I, would, I would temper those statements. I would say, um, you know, green, something that's all green is, you know, it's quite, it's quite nuanced. Something that's all green is more correct, is, to, is, is much more correct. Uh, something red is much more incorrect. And then the yellow is, yes, yeah, somewhere in between. Like we're really saying the nuance there is that we're really saying that we can't say it's correct, but we can't say it's incorrect. That's where the word comes in. So they kind mm. of, they work in conjunction with each other. So often, uh, you know, we don't like to, there are, there are certain words that are kind of interchangeable with certain colours as a whole sort of, you know, informal uh, set of rules around these things. You can't really, you know, give a green wrong, for example. Wow, it's so complex. Yeah. You know, it's good to know they're not just Googling it, though, mind <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, something like spin, you know, is something that often turns up with orange. So, we, I mean, we can't say that it's a lie, but... Uh, you know, we're we're saying that the politician is not correct and that they're putting their own spin onto mm. the issue. I was about to say that politicians would kind of spend a fair bit of time in the yellow zone, like the kind of... Yeah, and in fact, uh, most of our claims actually turn out in that direction. 
Mm. Um, because, you know, politicians are doing a job and their job is um, often, am I allowed to swear? Oh, <laughs> fucking go for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> their job is to sell a shit sandwich on occasion. So, um, <laughs> you know, they, they are trying, they're trying to get the truthiest spin on, mm. uh, you know, on a, on a fact to push their agenda. Yeah. That is, you know, that is their job. It's to sell something to the Australian public. That doesn't yeah. mean they're always telling the truth. Okay. The, the funny thing was the follow-up question is why should, we, why should the public trust fact check more than their favourite political or professional personality? I think you've just answered that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could say, I, I, I mean, I, I would say I'm pretty biased in that I think everyone, yes, people should trust us because our process is... Um, our, our, our process is, is very rigorous, I can tell you from the inside. We we kick all the tyres and we try and make sure that we're very thorough in the way that we investigate things. You're not really selling a shit sandwich from here either, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, might, you might call it spin, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but... Um, we we also we we our thesis is there for everyone to see, and all of our sources are laid out in the open. Um, and not only that, we go to we. It's not just us saying it. We often, you know, we we rely on expert commentary to tell us how to interpret a claim, and you know their opinion as well. Uh, while we don't always we don't always go 100% with their opinion it certainly informs what we do and their quotes are there for everyone to see as well mm -hmm. so everything we put out there if you disagree with it i mean that's fine what we're trying to do is contribute to the national conversation rather than hand down pronouncements from on high um but everything we do we make sure is very defensible and, uh, I mean, we've got a very um, pretty sparkly clean record, touch wood, uh, with... That's uh, pseudoscience. <laughs> <laughs> who checks the, the fact ABC checkers? employs pseudoscientific tactics. Uh, <laughs> please don't tell News Corp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so uh, we, we've got quite a good... At the, at the ABC, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, there's a full-on complaints cr process, which is completely independent from the ABC. They are f fiercely independent, and any member of the public can complain, and they often do, and I think they have to investigate. I've, you know, I've, a couple of times I've had to provide responses to fact checks, um, and if they see anything wrong with a verdict that we've given, um, you know, they, they will investigate, and I don't know what the punishment is for being found wrong. It'll be a retraction. Um, we've never issued a retraction on a verdict ever. Oh, wow. wow. That's, that that's a pretty good claim. That's Other fact-checking organisations in the world, some of them, some of them have. Mm. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to go out naming names, uh, <laughs> but, but cer certainly, I mean, in journalism, retractions aren't. You can tell uncommon. us after the recording's done. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, certainly in, in journalism, retractions aren't aren't uncommon. Um, so it's and a, that's a good thing. Like, oh, absolutely. When you, we, yeah. you know, we we've issued minor clarifications, but we've never issued a retraction on a verdict. We've never mm. had to go back on that because our process is. So rigorous. Mm. It's funny, like when politicians change their stance on a, sp a specific issue or whatever, or like you know, I can't say they're wrong, they're often crucified by the media and, and the public. I think it's a good thing when a politician comes out and said, you know, I got this one wrong. I think that's makes you don't want to do it alone. too much. Though. You don't want to do it too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I understand that, but you don't. Yeah, you know, at the same time, though, someone who's willing to admit they're wrong, that's that's a great process. It's. A, I think it should be celebrated. It is, and it instances. probably doesn't happen enough, I would say. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> I, can't, I actually can't think of an instance. Well, in that vein of people getting things wrong, who do you think are the biggest uh, – liars might be a strong word – people who often maybe say Bend the, the truth. wrong truths? Uh, yeah. right. Politicians, public figures, businesses? Well, I, sh I should say that, uh, I mean, it's philosophically, and this is one of the things that we, um, we're off we often grapple with, we've never called anyone a liar. You never see lie be below one of our verdicts because – Philosophically, you can't tell if someone's lying. Like, how can I tell that you're lying? You might believe ah, what you that's say. That's a really good point. We, yeah. can't, we, we can't say that a politician is lying yeah. because they might actually believe what they're yeah. saying. I mean, when Tony Abbott says that, um, you know, in the history of solemnized relationships, they've always been between a man and woman, we found that to be incorrect. But we can't say he's lying because we don't know, we don't know what's going on in Tony Abbott's head. I don't... 
I think most of the Australian public don't know what is going on in Tony Abbott's <laughs> 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 Seriously. Fair. Oh, that's <laughs> so do you have like a general group though? Uh, well, look. Go on, throw I someone mean, in there. It's we, businesses, isn't it? It's uh, businesses. Look, I will, I will say on the subject of Tony Abbott, he did, he did get a lot of claims wrong with us. And we, we checked him quite, quite prolifically because, uh, you know, he was Prime Minister during, like, for the longest... He has been probably for, Prime Minister for the longest time in our tenure. Um, Malcolm Turnbull would be probably just creeping up there now. Um, oh. And he... We're, we're changing Prime Ministers down here very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we're terrible at this. Yeah. So, I mean, he got out of how many claims did we check from him? 35 claims, I think, we checked um, before we uh, shut down for the election uh, last year. And out of those claims, uh, he got 11 in the red. He got four in the green and then 20 were in between. Um, I mean, I, I, should, I should temper this by saying, like, we're always checking contested claims. Mm. So we check claim. you know, we kind of slant towards claims that sound, you know, you kind of want to, could that be right kind of quality to them. Yeah. So, I mean, oftentimes with that, you, you know, with that in mind, we've, we're going to find someone wrong if it sounds wrong. But yeah. oftentimes also, like, you completely surprise yourself and it's right. Yeah. And those are actually some of the best fact checks. I you, think. you mentioned that you shut down uh, before, so around the election. What, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, we, so uh, last, last July, um, we, we shut down uh, due to budget cuts at the ABC. Okay, yep. Um, so at that time, um, we, our funding basically ran out two days before the election. So it was, you know, com- actually quite conveniently timed and in, in that we were about to, we were able to cover the entire election, yeah. which was really great. Uh, but um, unfortunately, yes, we did close down for almost a year until uh, the wonderful people at RMIT stepped in uh, and offered a partnership between the ABC and RMIT to oh, continue the great? venture. So we relaunched this year as a, as a partnership between RMIT and ABC. Now we are... RMIT ABC fact check, which is a bit of a letter salad. I'm sorry, but that <laughs> that is right. what we are. You think you could rearrange it into something that sounds cool? <laughs> it could be an anagram, <laughs> remit yeah. abc or something. Yeah, <laughs> remit abc. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work, does it? I don't have to change that around. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. What about at the other end of the spectrum? Who who is the most truthful? Uh, look. I don't see fact check. RMIT remit abc remit fact check. Look, at the, at the other end of the spectrum, I don't think I could name anyone in particular who I would say gets a lot right. But, uh, I mean, you oh, know... Really? Does anyone really tell the whole truth anymore then? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look there, are some, there are some people out there... I mean, politicians do occasionally, you know, say something that we, <laughs> occasionally. That we find to be correct. And there are some really interesting ones out there, like um, one we did recently, we checked Tony Burke, uh, who said that um, the government's proposed citizenship ch- test would... Uh, require a university sta- level standard of English. And I mean, you know, sometimes you look at a claim like that and you think that's got to be hyperbole. But in fact, we found that it was correct that, you know, based on the ELTS um, ratings for for what would need to be done by prospective uh, immigrants wanting to become citizens, indeed, they would need a university standard of English. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. I don't think I have a university standard of English. <laughs> <laughs> Me not speak good English. <laughs> um, uh, but returning, I mean, returning to the the question of you know people um, who uh, who answer things correctly. I would, uh, I, I, I would offer you this that Barnaby Joyce, who you guys, I'm sure you guys know, is a very sort of a shoot from the hip kind of politician. Um, we've checked him five times, and not one of those times has he been in the red. Wow, that's pretty good. He has a decent record with us. That doesn't mean he doesn't say things that are wrong. It's just too that bad he's not a politician anymore. Then is <laughs> <laughs> he's still a politician? He's not an MP. Oh, he's, he's not an MP. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's a big precise. Yeah. Right. But he could be again. He'll get if back. He wins He'll this get election. Back. So fact check breaks down like it's investigations into different topics. You've got health, the economy, environment, education, and many more. Which area is the hardest to see through the spin? Uh, they're all. They're all difficult for different reasons. Um, I think we do a lot on uh, the economy 
the economy is a really like it's a really strange kind of voodoo pseudoscience at the best of times. Oh, yeah. you're going to get along with Bern. <laughs> oh, We're going to go out for a beer after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, politicians are often taking credit for, uh, you know, um, the circumstances of people in relation to the economy. A really big topic that we often um, sort of get ourselves into uh, is like jobs numbers, jobs figures. Politicians are endlessly taking credit for jobs figures. But the reality of, of the situation is, you know, when Malcolm Turnbull a few years ago said, you know, 100,000 jobs have been created in the last few years, the, the issue is more on, you know, the, the, interna- the international economic cycle has a role to play in that. You know, the economy at home, which the government, you know, can pull levers on but doesn't necessarily control. And then there's just sheer population growth as well, which contributes to a rise in jobs. Mm. Politicians are often taking credit for the jobs, but can they really take credit for it? I think in that particular fact check, we said yes, but more to it. We found him sort of a pseudo, pseudo correct in that instance. Interesting. You mean that it's not black and white, that most things are grey? My God, who would have thought, huh? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. And that's where most politicians run afoul in, of, of us, is that they're, they're being just far too definite in their claims where, um, you know, nuance is, is needed. Mm, that's... Ugh. So what's the most outrageous mistruth exposed by fact check? Well, you know, there's one um, that that did used to come up a lot and uh, it doesn't come up as, uh, as much anymore. Um, but um, it was it was often repeated and it won our um, Golden Zombie Award one year. Yeah, <laughs> Golden <laughs> Zombie Award. Right, That's the award through, we give for the through. most egregious repeated lie. Uh, sorry, I won't say lie. I'll say uh, um, incorrect claim of the year. <laughs> um, uh, so um, Julie Bishop once said that uh, Australia... Um, the the Labor government bequeathed the worst set of books to um, not actual physical books, but yeah. <laughs> you know, some it, tattered Dr. Seuss or something. No, this is no, terrible. Or Fifty yeah. Shades of Grey. And what I mean when I when I when I refer to books, I mean uh, as in um, the record of debt and deficit. So she said that um, the Labor government, in their previous term, gifted um, you know the highest. Um, debt and record of debt and deficit um, ever. And um, I'm not sure if in nominal terms she might have been correct, but certainly you have to consider these things in context. So the experts told us that, well, really, you've got to look at, you know, like it looks like a big number, the debt and the deficit look like a big number that Labor left behind. Certainly to you and I, you know, billions and billions of dollars in the double digits seems like a lot. But in the context of the GDP of a country, which is an accepted measure, uh, that's it's actually a lot smaller than what was happening in World War II when you know mm. it was in the double it was in double digits as a percentage of GDP. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, the government was very keen at that point uh, to you know pin Labor on its economic record, and the coalition is always. Um, you know, trying to flash about its economic credentials as any government does. But, um, you know, even after we, uh, we we published that fact check, it was repeated. Um, we did another one. Matthias Cormann said something very similar during the election. We found it once again to be incorrect. Julie Bishop herself repeated it numerous times. And so for that, she got the golden zombie. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It kind of reminds me of the saying, was it uh, a lie will circle the earth seven times before the truth is put its shoes on type thing, you know? Something along that. I don't know the exact Well, that's quote, true. But <laughs> Not you. lie, Wade. Oh, sorry. Incorrect and, statement. And inaccuracy. Yeah. <laughs> and inaccuracy. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about some of these statements where the, the data just simply isn't there? So you guys spend a lot of time researching and finding the data, but sometimes there's stuff where the data is just not, uh, not, invail- uh, not available. Are there areas where fact check just won't go into because there's not the data there or other reasons? Well, look, yeah, we can't we can't go into certain things. Um, and some of the some are yes, the nature of the data, and some are yes, the nature of the claim, and some a combination of both. Um, I mean, a good example would be during the Queensland election. Um, there were some pretty 
you know, seemingly outrageous claims made, uh, you know, by One Nation, by Pauline Hanson and also the leader. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and also the leader of uh, One Nation in Queensland, Steve Dixon. Um, <laughs> Just as for our US listeners, that's kind of like they're like the far right conservatives. So if any US our listeners listening, yeah. Well, that's one nation. I suppose they're learning a lot about Australian politics in this episode. They are. They? Yeah. They are. It's about time we're sick of hearing about your politics. <laughs> 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 they're probably happy for a break. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, um, yes, they made some, some claims about, you know, sex education in school and said that, uh, you know, um, young, young people were being taught about masturbating and dildos and things like that. That's not something that we can really go out there and, Check. It's more like it's more of an investigative thing. I don't really know whether we didn't look into it because we know that we're just not going to be able to go around to every school and find out, and uh, we don't know where oh, those stories. Wouldn't that have come be an from. interesting interview with the principal? Exactly. Uh, next topic: uh, dildos. Uh, we're just wondering if uh, just like that. How would... many do you have on stock? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also with limited resources. I mean, you mm. know. So I mean, whether it's possible. Is is you know an, another thing is one thing whether we have the resources to you know send fact checkers around to every school in Queensland or you know chase the department or, or this or that this is a really like over the top example, um, you know there yes there are just some things there's not there aren't things that we won't touch I will say like we if we can check a claim we will try to check it within our resources but there are some that we just yeah, we just simply can't because the data doesn't exist or it's just not checkable or, you know, it's phrased in a way that is just so couched and waffly that it's just meaningless and we're unable to decipher yeah. the real <laughs> meaning of what's being said. I could imagine, especially with the crocodile, that, that was... Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's gonna, I would like to hear the result of that when that fact check comes out. Oh, it did come out this morning. Oh, out yeah, yeah, I checked yes. the fact check last night. Well, um, well you know, the verdict is that he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So and uh, I mean, we we, we got some months. So, pardon me. People aren't getting torn apart every three months. No, no, not so well. Is it okay. Annually, emotionally, we don't know that yet. <laughs> I sh- there are there isn't any data on that, so we can't check about we can't check emotions. Um, uh, look, we we found data from the Queensland Department of uh, Environment and Heritage Protection, and they. They gave us this data back to 1985 of fatal croc attacks. There's only been probably around a handful, around maybe 10 or so. I don't have the precise number on me. Most most crocodile attacks in that time have been non-fatal ones. Um, there's been a slight uptick in, in fatal ones. Um, over the past couple of years, there's been three um, this year and last year, so one last year and two this year. Uh, but there was just no credible way that he could say that there's one every three months. I think the closest he got was maybe one every six months or one every year over a certain time period. And then if you include all the non-fatal ones, I think he got to one every four months. But you can't argue that every single non-fatal one is someone being torn torn apart, apart, right? Yeah. You'd have to, I mean, that goes into a whole nother discussion about, you know, where where do you draw the line into into what is torn apart? Do they have to lose a limb and still survive and it be non fatal? Uh, do they lose skin? Do they lose a toe? I mean, I'm, <laughs> doesn't the, quite have the appeal. The of Bob Catter was to go every few months, someone gets nibbled on by. a crocodile. I want to know what was <laughs> going through his head, like as he just brought up crocodiles. It's a good ten million Australians that are there with you too. I think, wait. <laughs> <laughs> <Get out. laughs> oh, so. Since Donald Trump's come about, back to American politics for our U.S. listeners, because, you know, we can't get you too far off the U.S. for an extended period of time. It might start to feel strange. Um, have you had your work cut out for you since Donald Trump came to power? Well, look, uh, I mean, for us, we, we kind of leave that to the experts overseas. The fact checkers overseas are very good at checking American politics. Uh, I mean, notably uh, Politico, uh, sorry, uh, PolitiFact and The Washington Post have really great fact checking outfits. Um, and we, we, unless there's something that's sort of relevant in an Australian context, we try, we generally stay out of them. But having said that, I think they have certainly really got their work cut out for them. Oh. I mean, uh, the, the amount of uh, sort of contested statements that that man makes is, uh, I mean, more than any other politician uh, in recent memory, you would have to say that 
he's ma- he's making a lot. Um, <laughs> Washington Post recently did. Uh, they're, in fact, they're still doing it. It's a, it's kind of like a Trump lie tracker. They actually do call it lie, um, and they. Um, I don't have the exact figures on me, but he, they, they've worked out a figure of, like, how many lies he's told per day um, based on, like, w- what, they've, <laughs> what they've fact-checked uh, in, in accordance with his claim so that, you know, they give him a, you know, a wrong on the truth meter or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And, and so when he repeats that claim, a claim like that that's already been proven egregiously to be wrong, uh, you know, they, they give him another, another mark. And, I mean, it's, it's like in the... It's in the hundreds, so it's mm. you know he makes a he he actually wow. lies more than once a day, like he, <laughs> according to the Washington Post. Yeah, that's, that's scary. It's absolutely scary. Now, for our listeners at home, um, what advice can you give them? They obviously don't have the resources that you have at your disposable, you know, extra data. What 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 are some suggestions and advice you can give them for you know wading through all the rubbish and getting to the truth? Well, look, I would say, you know, very, very rarely do we um, do we end up with data that isn't publicly sourced. I mean, we often use like the ABS is a big one, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, who, you know, Mm -hmm. have a really good reputation. Uh, We also use sort of, um, you know, like supranational organisations like the OECD. Um, You know, there's there's a myriad of different things on there. And often it just begins with. A simple Google search for what you're looking for. The the key is to make sure that you're not just finding something that's confirming your bias. Um, so you want to make sure it's reputable. Uh, you want to make sure that the data is saying what you think it is because it's quite easy to manipulate data. Um, and it's quite you, you've always got to remember that correlation and causation are not the same thing. Um, a good example of that is I can't remember the fact-checking organisation that did it, but this is they they did one that's uh, um, related to Australia. Senator Ted Cruz, who was Donald Trump's uh, primary contender, um, he said that after the John Howard's uh, gun buyback scheme in the nineties, that uh, that rapes went up in Australia, and <sighs> certainly. Um, after, like, in, in, in that sense, he was correct, like, if, by, the, by the official statistics, um, you know, rapes went up. But there was the things to remember about that data uh, that, first of all, Australia didn't have the same kind of gun culture where everyone's carrying a gun as the US in the 90s. And second of all, um, rape is, is, is something that in previous years has been seriously underreported because of shame, basically. Mm. More and more women these days are coming out and saying that, you know, that's not okay and they're not just sweeping their rape under the carpet and, and dealing with it privately. They're reporting it to the police and it's being included in the statistics. So it was a very misleading statement to make, mm. but the data seemed to correlate. Um, so that's, that's another thing to remember. Correlation is not causation. Any yeah. scientist will tell you the same. Yeah, that's a pretty scary thing to think that, oh, the reason why people don't rape other people is because they, they have a gun. Like, that kind of, that thinking, like, seriously, if you're not raping someone because you own a gun, you've got some serious fucking issues that we need to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more because women can't, he was saying it's because women can't protect themselves. Ah, I, and, I mean, get that. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's it's such a silly thing to say because you. I mean, I grew up in the nineties. How many how many women did you know that carried guns in their purses in the nineties? Burn carries a gun in his purse, but that's <laughs> purse is what I call my underpants. <laughs> <laughs> No, look, Matt, thank you very much for joining us today. I don't think we've ever had an interview where I felt obliged to so carefully check the words we've used as we've asked the questions. But for keeping us on our toes and keeping the rest of at least Australia informed, we really appreciate your work. No problems. Great to be here. (laughs) Thanks, Matt. See you later.